Hello, this is J.W. Greenbaum bringing you Gaining an Edge, the show we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. So underneath the camera today, we actually have a very cool knife, and that is the ZT-0350 TS. TS stands for Tiger Stripe. You can, of course, get the regular ZT-0350 with a blacked-out blade. Now, this is a knife that I think has kind of become a decent deal retroactively and wasn't always one and which also I like a lot about it, but there's also a lot that yeah, maybe I'm not so crazy about personally, but I can see why other people would like. So actually there's a lot to talk about here, so let's just get right into it and get out our uh, uh, tape measure. And yeah, this is, okay, so actually if you're measuring usable cutting edge, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of in the, uh, three and a half inch range-ish, and uh, your overall length is going to be seven and three quarter inches. So let's just put that down and let's get out our scale. And no, this is not a light knife in the least. It's very ergonomic, I should say. That is one thing that is absolutely going for it. So. Yeah, we're looking at something that is 6.275 ounces. This is not, by any means, a light knife. And interestingly enough, it is actually descended from a knife that was even larger than it, the ZTO 300, which was 10% larger. I believe that I've also had the ZT0302, um, the so-called Gibbs knife of NCIS fame. Uh, so let's close this, and if you'll notice, yeah, this is an assisted knife, so something to be aware of. And also you have uh, left hand and right hand tip down and tip up carry. Obviously I have mo changed this from tip down, which comes from at the factory into tip up. Uh, it is a little bit of a pocket hog, but not really. Um, the one thing I will say is it's an extremely shallow carry knife. Uh, you do have a lanyard hole right there, but yeah, it's very, very shallow carry. Um, obviously, you have both a flipper tab and thumb studs, and it flies out. Uh, the assist is actually pretty good for a speed safe. You know, usually you're fighting it. This, uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. So let's uh, get out our size comparison knives. Our... Cold, or, yeah, our Ontario Nice Route Model 1, which, as you can see, is a little bit longer, but obviously it's nowhere near as beefy. Um, next up, of course, is going to be our Ontario Knives Rat Model 2, and that's much smaller. Uh, next up after that is going to be our token Spider Co. Paramilitary 2. This one is the Blade HQ exclusive Tonto, and that's actually very similar tip to butt. Although it is a little bit longer, I believe. So uh, next up after that is actually a very good knife to compare it to. And that is the Cold Steel Recon 1. And I think these knives were basically made for very similar markets. Which is to say hard use, very manly, and kind of tactical, but all the while very practical as well. But I honestly think this one is a little bit more practical. Uh, it's a shallower carry. It is a little bit um, more ergonomic, and quite frankly, I think the opening mechanism is a little bit nicer. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. Here is the O-Knife Night Claw to measure top to bottom, and this is a very, very tall knife. Really tall when we include the flipper tab. So there's that, and finally, everybody's favorite toenail clipper, the Kershaw platform, where, yeah, that's totally dwarfed. So, the ZT-0350 TS, and I, I, this also applies to the regular ZT-0350, um, this is a very good knife in the hand, I will absolutely say that. Uh, however, it does have, as I said, it has a lot of things that I like and a lot of things that I don't but I can see why other people would. So first off, things that I don't like, let me get that out of the way. Um, I can see 
a lot of people why they might have an issue with the recurve, but I don't. But I should mention it because if you're sharpening on flat bench stones, yeah, the recurve's going to give you some issues. I, I By the way, if you are sharpening on flat bench stones, I would say just get a Cold Steel Recon 1 because it's basically the same concept as far as application, but yeah. Another thing that I think a lot of people might not be crazy about is the assist. Uh, you can see it drops down to here with the assist. You just push it in. It's very smooth, but it's still an assist. And I know not everybody's going to love that. Um, I personally really dislike the pocket clip. It's just very flat, big. It's a billboarded. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's super shallow. Um... I can see why you might want that if you have gloves on. Honestly, that is the one defensive that I can see of it. But I still think the Cold Steel Recon 1 might be a little bit better of a choice insofar as it's a little bit deeper carry than this. And by the way, no, it is not a shallow carry. It's not a deep carry knife at all, but uh, this is just very shallow. Uh, this is a Ken Onion design, and uh, it has CPM S30V steel, so good blade steel and good designer. Um... It absolutely, I, I keep praising the ergonomics, but it really is good in the hand. Uh, you do have a liner lock on this, and it is a pretty functional, uh, very beefy liner lock, so I absolutely would trust this uh, in a harder use situation. Um, and I can also see that, you know, some people might think the jimping is a little bit overly aggressive. Honestly, if you have gloves on, this seems like a, just a great knife with gloves, but there is one complaint that I really can see, and that's having the flipper tab directly over jimping. I'm not a big fan of that, uh, especially with an assisted design where you're pushing down a little bit harder on it, and it just flies out, so your finger, you know, winds up, you know, scraping across there. Uh, that's, you, you can, of course, get around that by using the thumb studs, but, uh, yeah, it's just something where, yeah, did they really have to put that there? It's just, just something where, I don't know. I, I just feel like if I could only have one knife that was very tactical, I'd pick the Cold Steel Recon one. Just me. But um, it's also very heavy, and I, I know some people would dislike that, but personally, I do like that. Now, I've I've been rather harsh on this knife, so I should start saying good stuff about it. Like I said, the ergonomics are great. The build quality is very good. Uh, one thing that kind of surprised me about this, I suppose because I'd read some of the earlier reviews around 2018, 2019, was basically that it was a nice stuff. Uh, basically, it was just a, a, a Kershaw that had been billboarded with ZT, or at least a, a US-made Kershaw that had been billboarded with ZT. Honestly, I think this is better quality. Yes, it does have an FRN backspacer. I realize that they're basically using similar materials to US made Kershaw, but at the same time, there just seems to be better fit and finish on this than, let's say, a Kershaw dividend or, you know, something like a Kershaw leak. Might as well stay with Ken Onion. Um, it just seems like a really well executed design. And just something that is very good, very um, overbuilt, but also really cool. And honestly, this is one of the better uh, implementations of the Kershaw Speed Safe Assist uh, that I've seen. I mean, the link was pretty solid when they had when that had it. The dividend was a little bit oversprung for me. This seems to be just right. So. If you want a really, really good deluxe assisted knife, I'd actually recommend this. Uh, and by the way, no, it isn't cheap, but at the same time, it is a pretty decent deal. It's CPM S30V G10, really, really beefy liner lock for $188. So, US made. Um, keep in mind, it's pretty solid. Uh, now let's see how well it slices, and no, it's not going to be God's gift to slicing because it really does have thick blade stock, but it, it's not bad either, as we can see here. And so let's uh, just uh, finish slicing these. Okay, and finally this. So, one last thing, it's going to be our packing peanut. 
it should slice just fine. It's got a good edge on it, by the way, which I have stropped, but it's a good edge. Yeah, I think it would really depend on your needs if you get this or not. There's there's a lot to unpack here. It's just, it, it is a good, strong, beefy, built-up, manly knife, uh, but it is a little on the heavy side. Uh, honestly, it's, it, it isn't really he that heavy for me, but then again, my knives tend to be on the heavier side, but I, it, I, I, I just, I like it. I mean, if you, if you can accept heavy, if you can accept overbuilt, if you're looking for that kind of big, huge shoulder, yeah, this is probably what you should get. And yes, it does have an assist spring, uh, it's one of the, it, it, I, I, again, I also would recommend this if you use gloves all the time, because this knife almost seems like it was made for a gloved hand. Now, granted, I do think the Cold Steel Recon 1 is equally good in this same, and it, probably better at a lot of things than this, but if you want a knife that is made in the USA and you want it just to just fly out there every single time with the assist spring, yeah, I think the ZTO 350 is going to serve you well. So, sorry that got a little bit wordy and a little bit information heavy, but I had a lot to say about the uh, ZTO 350 uh, TS. So, this has been JW Greenbaum, having brought you Gaining an Edge, the show where we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you could subscribe, I'd be very grateful. Like, if, you'd leave, yeah, if you could leave a comment, I'd be very grateful. And if... Um, you know, also please be aware uh, that eventually, and there's just a lot going on in my life, but eventually I will do a giveaway for a Spyderco Military 2, a Rosecraft Blades Little Riverman Skinner, and uh, some swag, and it will be open to subscribers only. So this is JW Greenbaum signing off and wishing you a great day.